All righty. Well, Gary asked the big question. This is one of these big, big questions that uh, I don't think anybody has a full handle on. This is a deep, deep, not a tip of the iceberg type thing. And that is, uh, he put it in these words, foreknowledge versus predestination. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, foreknowledge um, is knowing something beforehand. You know, you already know it. Something that's going to happen in the future, you already know. Predestination, and here are these words right here. I wrote them out. Predestination here is a destination that you're going to or it's going to happen and it's pre-planned it sounds like it's a predestination that's going to happen now i would prefer um to not say foreknowledge versus predestination because they actually work together i don't think it's a contrasting thing like ver like if you have a battle of uh, of in in a competition or something it's this one versus this one or something uh, so I would like to change it um, for knowledge and predestination. I don't know. So do they contradict each other? That's number one. No, they don't contradict each other. Uh, knowing something ahead of time uh, doesn't necessarily mean, uh, now this is where it's going to be complicated, doesn't mean that it's uh, that uh, you make it happen. That's what predestination seems to suggest here. Um, and I would suggest, and by the way, I don't have the answers to this. I'm just suggesting, <laughs> you know, my thoughts on this is that God knows everything. We know that. He knows who's going to receive Christ. And due to this foreknowledge of it, um, he plans out the things around that person's free will. See, I'm a believer in free will. I think it's just self-evident. If there's no free will, then uh, I think there's a real problem with that. And it's self-evident. I just clap my hands. That was a choice I made. Was I, was I predestined to do this? Um, I was I programmed to do it like a computer puts out da uh, data or has data put in it and it puts out outcomes and results. And uh, I just think that we have free will. That's self-evident. And that's why we're going to be judged according to our choices. And I think that's all the way through the scripture rather than just human um, self-evident knowledge. Um, when when Joshua said, choose this day, or let's go before that in Deuteronomy, when, and when God said, uh, I set before you life and death, um, choose life. That's a choice that you make. And you make choices all the time. I make choices. I'm, whenever I sin, I chose to sin. I wasn't predestined to sin. I wasn't like matter and, uh, and um, you know, I'm, I'm wired is what I'm trying to say to matter and, and energy and put together. And I just am wired to do that. It just happens by predeterminism. Uh, so, but where does predestination, that gets a little bit more sticky or a little bit more complicated. So, um, and I don't know how he does it. I personally believe that God has his will, man has his will, and there's a mystery in between there that I'm not sure that we can uh, put together really completely and understand. But um, I believe that the foreknowledge of God causes election. That's number one. And there's people that disagree with this, even beautiful, wonderful Christians. And you may be screaming right now, you're so wrong on what you're saying and what you're trying to say. Uh, but the big verse that helped me out, and there's a, I know a lot of the, I know all those verses. I don't know if I can remember them all right, right off the top of my head. But the big verse that causes me, um, and I call it a clincher sort of verse, that causes me to n understand election and predetermination and predestination uh, is First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. You probably, if you're aware of this subject, go, he's going to quote that. Yep, I did. And that is, Peter said, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So those elect were predestined, in a sense, to receive Christ. It was sort of planned that way, foreordained and all. Uh, but my belief at this point, and you could write in the comments your, and argue your case, and I'll be glad to say, you know what, you're right, and I change it. Um, it says, elect according to the foreknowledge. He chose them according to what he knew. Now, what did he know? This is where 
this is where it's kind of challenging uh, for some people to believe, but I personally tend to believe that he knows what you're going to do and therefore he chooses you. He, and that's some people are screaming, no, no, no. That's the response. He sees your response. So the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. There's a net put out like for fish, for example, and some catch, get caught, some don't. Some respond with hardness uh, and some respond with softness and tenderness and a melting of your heart to the gospel and, and God. Some are drawn towards him. Some are pushed away. Um, there's the Pharaohs in the world and there's the Judas Iscariots in the world. You know, that uh, there's a, he knew that they were going to be like that and he used them for his purposes. Uh, Paul said that about, well, actually, it's uh, God said that in Exodus and Paul quoted it in Romans 9, where he says, I chose you for this very purpose to, and I, I raised you up and all that. And, and, and okay, blah, 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 blah. So what am I saying? I believe that God gives us choices. He knows what our choice is going to be. And because of that, he works things out. All things work together for good to them that love God and are, are the called according to his purpose. Um, and then he foreknew, by the way, there's passages like in Romans 8, then he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So that one sounds like, yep, he predestined you, he foreknew you, he predestined you. But he actually says, I'm picking you out. I chose you out. I'm calling you out, the called out ones, to be conformed to the son. I like, also in Ephesians 1, that great passage, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. So there's a purpose for why he's calling us and choosing us to be holy and also to be conformed to his son. So it's not just I choose you and among all them and I just say, shoo, 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 I reject all of you. No, he's not refusing anyone that comes to him. Whoever will come, let him come and drink. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes. There's a responsibility of man. There's a response to man. He knows what that responsibility is. And then in a sense, he says, okay, I'm going to uh, watch this person. I know what he's going to do. And I'm going to predestine everything to work out so that that person gets saved. And it's still that cho choice. I remember in my own life clearly, and this is by experience and this is subjective and all, but this is real experience. How I felt the presence of God, the Spirit of God, I didn't know it was Him at that point, telling me to go up and give my life to Christ. And I felt the resistance and the hesitation. There was a choice I needed to make. And it wasn't irresistible. Um, I, 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 he didn't just make me do it. But there was a literal choice. There was a battle going on. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And that was my part. But there's the fact is God did work in me. God did predestine that, uh, that arrangement, that message on a Sunday morning on October 2nd, 1977. So I, I received Christ on that next Wednesday. But, but still, um, there was a choice being made. And yet God made sure that everything was arranged so that that message would come to me. It happened to be in that service, blah, blah, blah. And you, if you watch that, God plans that your life. I happened to meet this person at that time. This happened to hear about this. Thousands of things. I wish I would have journaled these in my life where you can see the hand of God, you know, and, and you can see the rule of God working in, in people's lives and in in everything in history. And he's going to work it out in the future. He plans. He's sovereignly in control. And yet he, he doesn't force people he doesn't coerce and manip he manipulates it in a good way. I call it holy manipulation of circumstances, of conversations, of thoughts. Thoughts that come to you can be from God. He also allows the devil to, to do things. He allows all this to go, and he's working out his own purposes and his own counsels. Ultimately, he gets what he wants. Does he want everybody, to, all these people to go to hell? No, he's not willing that anyone should perish. And he doesn't willingly bring affliction to the grief uh, and grief to the children of men, it says in Lamentations 3. And so uh, these are scriptures. You put them all together. And so uh, foreknowledge and predestination is working together, not working against each other. The predestination is more challenging and difficult to understand how he does it, but he does. And yet he didn't take away man's will. I think he backed, for example, Pharaoh in a corner where he knew the next thing was going to be his life. Well, he still could have resisted and said, well, take my life then. But he said, I don't want to die. So he, he really worked in those situations. He killed his firstborn sons and all that. That's kind of definitely vengeance against his people when um, Egypt took the firstborn of his uh, son and all that. 
and more to it than that meets the eye there. Okay, getting back to this, this topic at hand, uh, foreknowledge, I think that's kind of understood. We can see, I, it's not understood, it's, it's realized. Like, how does he know the future? He can see it. He's, it's just a remarkable truth. And you say, I don't know. yeah, this is all a bunch of bunk. Yeah, but look at the, read the Bible and see hundreds of years before, thousands of years before, he, 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 and he gave tons of prophecies. And they weren't written down later. It's a bunch of bunk that these so-called scholars are su suggesting and all that. No, he, he admitted it. He, Jesus predicted his death. The future is in the hands of God. So, and that's the predestination. He determines uh, the destination, what he wants, and it's a predestination towards it. It's before the destination is going to happen because he knows it's going to happen, and he works it out according to his purposes. Again, there's this mystery between God's will and our will. I may have not answered this at all to your satisfaction or your liking, and maybe I'm not as deep as I can go on this. It's a deep subject that I can't maybe see it completely all the way down there. But I think there's some validity on what I'm saying, at least to the point that they do coincide beautifully. Um, all right, I hope that helps. Maybe this is going to be part one. I'll change and edit it to part one and then try it again on part two. Please feel free to share in your comments below and let me know what your reactions are. And let me s challenge me with verses, challenge me with uh, thoughts and maybe I can get uh, real understanding, more understanding. All right. Thank you. Bye.